is that you answer honestly and sincerely based on your point of view rather than someone imposing it on you. So what do you think? How would you answer that question? Where did the universe come from? I don't think I'm qualified to answer that. You don't need to be an astrophysicist to answer that. <laughs> no, but I'm because even they can't answer it, trust me. Yeah, exactly. I think I would come closer if I was an astrophysicist, but I don't know. They tell you, they tell you that like the beginning, like the Big Bang and how it expanded and all that. They tell you like the beginning, like the Big Bang and how it expanded and all that. But I don't think they can go beyond that. The reason for that is because science works on the basis of space and time. And they can't think of space or time before the universe existed. So it's a conundrum that they have to uh, deal with, basically. So anything, look, you don't have to be right or wrong. I mean, at least don't be wrong. But from your point of view, how would you answer like this question if it came, if somebody asked you this? Well, what is your background, if you don't mind asking? What did you study? What did you study? What's your background? We're, we're studying film. Film? Yeah. Oh, you don't want to be on camera? No. The irony. We're, we're behind the camera. <laughs> That's good. So maybe you want to film me, you know? Like talking about this topic. I don't know. Yeah, but, se but seriously, have you given a thought to such a question? Um, it doesn't really concern me that much. No? Like, when I go into existentialism, it's not really where the universe came from. It's just like, why am I here? Yeah. Also, have you asked that question? That's another philosophical question. Yeah. Why am I here? So they don't want to be on camera. So they are film people who don't want to be on in front. They like to be behind. So yeah, that's that's another philosophical question that people ask. The purpose of life or the purpose of existence. You thought of that? Um, yeah, I have like no conclusions. Oh, obviously, I mean, not everyone says that, okay, I conclude this is, but you know, the question here is not to put you in a box or to put you in a corner. The question is for you to, to be sincere with yourself, because I'm sure everyone asks these philosophical questions to themselves, and they try to formulate some sort of a response. How would you answer? I think there is a force, I think there is, um, I like to think that there's like a higher being that um, at least guides the universe and guides okay. us. And because that, that's what makes sense in my mind. Right. So when you see a higher being, like a, like I'm, God or like I'm thinking of God. Is that what you're thinking yeah. as well? Yeah. Okay. So you, you, you actually believe in a God? Yeah, I think I can say that. Yeah. Okay. So, well, so if I asked you, because there are lots of people who believe in God and their God is different. Yeah. Yeah. So you got hundreds of religion who might believe in hundreds of different gods. So how would you narrow it down to let's say a short list or something or maybe one I don't know I don't know how you function by the way I'm a Muslim so I firmly believe that God is one so I believe in pure monotheism and this is similar to Judaism and uh, well I think to some extent other religions as well how would you shortlist your or do you not for, for you is that not important I grew up Christian and so I'm used to the idea of like one God or at least a unified God so that's what I, makes sense to me okay do you still hold on to that belief yeah. okay because in Christianity you believe obviously Jesus is God as well and then you believe his father is God as well and then you believe the Holy Ghost is God as well so how do you reconcile with that with your principle of oneness of God or mon pure monotheism how do you reconcile that I don't reconcile it because I feel that that's um, a little bit semantics how is it how is the semantics because that's just getting into nitty-gritty for me yeah. where you, it's you, like, you can just stand here behind the camera oh. instead of going a mile away yeah. guys they don't want to be on yeah they don't want to go so let's let, let's respect the wishes yeah yeah yes sorry you were you were saying it doesn't need to be reconciled did you say it doesn't need no so how do you how do you make sense of these three different entities as one? How do you make sense of that? I don't because when I do, it's too much of a headache for me. 
So you just accept it? Yeah. Well, no, not accept it. I think uh, that's just like a part of discovery, where it's not something I can put my all my headspace into, but it's not something that I um, also think that it doesn't matter completely. So what? I'm still I'm still learning. Yeah, fair enough. What if I told you, if that is your belief in the Trinity, then you're in effect going against going against uh, the teaching of Jesus Christ. What if I told you that? Wait, say that again? Okay. So if you believe in the in a triune God, are you listening? Yeah. So if you believe in the in a triune God, in a trinity, then that belief is something which is not what Jesus advocated, not not what any prophets in the Bible advocated. How would you respond to that? Um, yeah, yeah. What do you mean, yeah? So you're going, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. You're, you're basically going against Jesus Christ's teaching. If you think so, yeah. Not if I think so. That's what the Bible says. Um, yeah, if you think so. <laughs> I, are, you, are you just trying to evade the question? I'm not avoiding it. I'm just like, that's not really what matters to me. No, but so do contradictions don't matter to you in your belief? Contradictions don't matter, and contradictions are everywhere. So I'm no, but, kind of always working with them. Not really. I mean, look, if if you believe that, do you believe in a square circle? In what? A square circle. I'm not hearing you now. Okay, come closer. You want me on camera? Don't worry. You guys are film people. You know how the focus works. None of them are pointing towards you. So what I'm saying is that a square. My conversation on camera as well. Yeah. yeah. They are recording me, but yeah, not recording you. I don't want to you. do that on the conversation because I just don't want to be recorded right now. Do people know your voice? Are you are you famous? He's going to be one day. <laughs> well, yes, and, so, but but he's not now, right? So we can film him now. So look, the reason the reason I asked you, can you if you believe in contradictions, then you believe something like a square circle. You know what the square circle? A circle and a square. Oh, square and a circle. Existing as one entity. Oh. Is there such a thing? A square and a circle. Yeah, a squ it's called a square. I think I know what you mean. It's a squared circle. It's, it's, it's basically what Basically. philosophers use to show contradictions in, in, in your speech. You're going to die and yeah. you will find it. Oh, so this is, a contradiction cannot be real. So you can imagine it, but it cannot be real. You will die. In reality, you don't have a, you, you either have a square or you have a circle. You can't have a squared circle. You see what I mean? Just ignore him, it's just background noise. So by the way, this is Speaker's Corner. We have hacklers like him who come and hackle a discussion in a discussion when you're having one. So that, that is what I me meant about uh, contradictions. In real life, a person would not accept because there's no such thing as, as, as contradiction in reality. Unless you, unless you say it, say for example, a married bachelor. Can you think of a married bachelor? No, I can't. Why? I just, it's a random question, honestly. No, because it's a contradiction. The reason you cannot think of a married bachelor is because it's a contradiction. And as humans, we operate in such a way that we cannot accept, unless you're insane, yes, unless someone is insane, you cannot accept a contradiction. And that is the reason if you say, I believe in one God, then you cannot say at the same time, I believe that God is three in one. Because that's a contradiction in terms. God is either one or not. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, for example, when Jesus says that the only true God is the Father, if he makes such a statement, then can anybody else be the only true God? Yeah, according to what you're saying, what you're leading on. Of course. Not according to my saying. This is what Jesus says, like I said. I gave you the reference as well. John chapter 17, verse number 3. Yeah, I'm not denying that. Yeah. So not, if, I'm, if I'm Jesus... To you. No, no, that's fine. I, I just want to know your response. If Jesus says that the only true God is the Father, and you say, no, the only true God is the Trinity, whom should I believe? Jesus? Oh. <laughs> By the way, these, uh, th these people, they are here first time as Speaker's Corner, so they are feeling a bit nervous. I can sense that. <laughs> no one is here to attack you, just asking you no, questions. Yeah, I'm not trying to... This is Speaker's Corner, we speak here. Yeah, you speak, and I'm just here to listen. I'm not here to... No, no, it's, it's a conversation. What would you say yeah. to 
people who believe in the Trinity but would say that they're polytheistic, would that be a problem for you? Because that's no longer a contradiction. If you're a Christian and you say you're a polytheist, then you're not a Christian, are you? Because that again, like I said, is a contradiction in terms. Because every time when a religion says that they are a true religion, but then every time you find contradictions within it, then it actually is not a true religion, is it? Because truth by itself cannot have internal contradictions. That is the definition of truth. That it should be free from internal contradictions. Yes, the example of married bastard I gave you, you cannot have a married bastard. So the person is either married or he's a bastard. You can't have it both ways. So you need to accept one. Because every time, look, the reason, you know, earlier you said it doesn't matter. I think it matters. If you believe in God, then surely you will be believing in the hereafter, in life after that. Am I right? Yes. So to get the right religion matters a lot. So if you're going to put all your eggs in one basket and say, I'm going to believe in this religion and I hope that I'm being sincere and with all my heart that this is the right religion. What if it turns out to be the wrong religion? And then you face God and then God informs you that you were, you were given the option to seek out the true religion and the true God. And you stuck with the tradition that either your parents or your family or your environment Yes, impacted your thought process and your thinking, and you never bothered to look for the truth. What are you going to say to God that?